Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the 12 volt and 5 volt for the labs. Because a year ago or something I already did a video about getting rid of all these small adapters. Because in the first place they all use of course a socket. But secondly most of them are switch mode. Uh, can create some uh, EMI distortion. Uh, so Radio M especially you don't want that. But practical also it takes too many sockets. So this is my uh, solution for 12 volt. It is a yeah, ham radio power supply. It's, it's more for the older CB. It's only 4 amps but it should be enough for all my distribution amplifiers and all my 12 volt uh, stuff. But because it's linear it needs to dissipate all the extra power into heat. I adjusted it internally because it is 13.8 and I really don't want more than 12 for these devices. Uh, but it gets very hot so I added a ventilator and in the end it's not that practical. So I already replaced the power supply. We have a big one here. This is adjustable so I didn't need to uh, adjust it internally. These are also originally made for up to 15 volts. So that also means it needs to dissipate a lot. And these are kind of old power supplies. So they are actually made for 220 volts. And when we look at the power meter here. We are almost at 240. So that means it needs to dissipate now even more. So what I did, I added here uh, a variac to put it in front and I just lowered the voltage to about 200 volts and then it is still around uh, 18, 16 volts somewhere. So when I add more load, it will still have enough to keep the 12 volts because it will drop of course with a bit of load. But because it's regulated, it will correct that. So, but it doesn't need to go back down from 20 volts almost back to 12 it can now do 16 or 18 to 12. But nowadays the world has uh, changed again and a lot is 5 volt. I have here a uh, voltage reference USB-C 5 volts as internal step up converter but it is all in a metal casing so I won't see the distortion. I have here this is sort of a PLL also powered by a USB so it's 5 volt it's another reference here also 5 volt and also there is at some point there is an end to the power that the PC can deliver to all these USB ports so then you usually use a powered USB hub. So I have a powered USB hub here, I have here a 4 port, I have here a multi port, this one is pretty cool because it also has switches uh, but guess what? The whole story starts again with this switch mode power supplies and this one the current is a lot higher because the voltage is lower. So you need for the same amount of power you need a lot more amps. In this case it's 2 amps even. So if you have a few of these you need easily 4 or 5 amps. And again on top of that I don't like I lose so many sockets with this. I'm also still scared for EMI or RFI. All these distortions I can get on my power line or just in the air when I try to receive some stations. So what I uh, look for on uh, our Dutch eBay called Marplaats, I found these power supplies. These are linear, they are from Delta Electronica. So this is Dutch uh, quality. It's 5 volts. 10 amps and it's linear so let's have a look at it. It has top quality RCA in that time they made top quality it's I think 20 30 years old. This is just a few 30 55s. Then when we look at the other side we have a big transformer we have two caps uh, I think 10 volts I think it's like 30,000 micro uh, farads twice and I was told by a viewer if you charge them slowly they uh, you can get the capacity back so I actually tried that and I measured afterwards the capacity and they are still good so it really depends on the type of capacitors that they uh, that they used if they stay good after all these years so don't start just replacing them because you think you need to do it. It has current limit, you can adjust the voltage a little bit. This is a proper power supply. So I want to use this to power all my USB hubs. 
Well, these are from the times that we still had 220 volts. So this will also have the problem that it needs to dissipate a lot of heat. Uh, this transformer I cannot adjust, but I have another one, which I already connected. And they have two extra wires that you can go to 230 volts. So at least it needs to dissipate a little bit less. So this is the other one, and you can see I moved this wire from here to here, and this wire from here to here. And then I think you have twice uh, a few windings extra, so it will get less out in the secondaries. So it needs to dissipate less heat. So this one I cleaned up, so we can see here in the display, it looks quite a lot better. It was made for 220 volts, well I switched it now to 230, but that means it's almost 240 now we saw on the uh, voltage meter. So it still needs to dissipate, so I'm not sure if this is enough what I did, or I also put the variac uh, in front. What I also did, I added some line filtering in the primary side before it goes into transformer also to get rid of some of the distortions and here I have these ferrite chokes on the DC part also to get rid of everything that I might have. So the power to my USB hubs would be quite clean and I also put one of course in the end. I added also a voltage meter because this will go somewhere under my desk but of course I want to be able to monitor a little bit. So this goes somewhere below and then I have here my voltage meter to see if the voltage didn't drop too much, but it is properly regulated. These are proper uh, power supplies and maybe I add later a temperature uh, meter as well. And also I added some filtering here to the lab. So I bought one of these from AliExpress. It is a four stage filter. This one is up to 10 amps, but I also ordered one that is three stage 20 amps. But first I want to try this one, if it actually improves one, because this one had a very nice housing that I actually like. We can open it, looks proper. So we can see it has uh, multiple stages. There is a schematic also that I will show you, and it just passes through and it should filter out all the noise. So changing my 12 volt for the lab and also my uh, 5 volts for the lab, I thought I also want to do something with my cables because I have changed the setup uh, uh, many times, almost every month uh, it is in a different uh, order and my cables was really starting to be a mess underneath the desk. So it was time to uh, reorganize that. So I bought some uh, extension cords and uh, power sockets and I immediately have here also one that is lightning protection. These are the type 3 that I talk about in my other video about uh, surge protection and it is also an EMI and RFI filtering. So hopefully to have super super clean power here in the lab. So I got rid of all my 12 volt switch modes. Everything is connected to the big power supply. I thought I also did the same for my 5 volt, but I have here also a little charger. This one. So I did that also in the end. And I also had these remote power sockets, but these are Chinese. No certification, nothing. It had Wi-Fi and RF. And I replaced those also with a smaller more uh, sleek, more smaller. Uh, these are uh, from Germany, so they have all the certification needed for Europe and even for Germany. So I trust these more. These don't have Wi-Fi, only RF, but that's good enough. Something like the click on, click off only then uh, hopefully better. So this also should give less radiation because the only thing that is transmitting is my remote. So if I don't touch it, it should do nothing. Also, I find out that one of my 
distribution amplifiers. You have this for 10 megahertz only. Those have bond filters, but this is kind of a trigger amplifier. So it amplifies from almost DC up to 200 megahertz. And if the outputs are not uh, terminated, it can cause oscillation. And that is what it did. So I ordered a few of those little BNC terminators, 50 ohms. So all the outputs that I don't use, I will have to terminate because on the spectrum analyzer, I didn't uh, store the screen, but I could really see some peaks. Uh, yeah, so that was also not good. So hopefully everything is now more quiet. Then I have one thing left. This is from my uh, GPS DO. It's running 24 seven, 365 uses between five, seven watts. If I do that linear, it will use at least 15, 20 watts. So that being 24 7, 365, maybe I want to have that switched, but I don't like the noise. So what I want to do with that is have this metal box. I will add this for the power with the fuse. And then going through this EMI filter, then have the switch mode inside. Then I have here another filter on the DC side, also goes in the box. I probably I need to separate that a little bit in the right way, but there is space enough. And then I close it, so it's completely RF and EMI closed. I can add some extra ferrite uh, chokes also on both ends. And then I have a very efficient switch mode, but hopefully very quiet. So I have my linears here. In the back is the readout. I have the power supply in the bottom here below, just in the corner in the back there. I have one USB hub uh, underneath the desk that is now also powered by the linear power supply. And here for easy access, I have another USB hub with switches also that I can switch on and off the outputs, which is great. And also powered by the linear. So almost all my switch modes are gone. So that is what I was doing when I don't make videos. I'm improving here the lab. I already did the type two for search protection in my electricity box downstairs. Now I also added some extra search protection type three here with also EMI and RFI filtering. So also my electricity is now better filtered. And with the switch modes now changed to uh, linear power supply, hopefully also the RF noise in my lab is less. And also when I put the terminators on the distribution amplifiers, I will do a new uh, check then also on the spectrum analyzer. And then hopefully I have a much cleaner signal here. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.